This is Kulu. I'm giving this guy a hundred rupee tip. Samosa, omelets. All right, omelet in the backpack here. Okay. Here we go. Three egg freshly made omelet here for 40 rupees, that is 50 cents. And some cashew cookies. HRTC bus stand, Manali. I am trying to get to Sisu, other side of the mountains, through the tunnel. There is this uh, town of Sisu about an hour's drive away, which is further into the Himalayas and I'll get more of a mountain experience. Just take a taxi maybe. How much to Sisu? Yes. 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 How much? 1500. 1500. Tore Hindi. Okay. Okay. Achha, okay. Achha, okay. Welcome you Lahol Valley. Yeah. Hey Lahol Valley. You are amazing. Oh yeah, it's beautiful. This best hotel? Yeah. Yeah. Hey Rana. How much for a room? One, one person. One, one person, one night. One night. Thousand person. A thousand? Yeah, yeah. Okay. This is Sisu. I guess there's more to it. We shall find out. My hotel is right there. Little Daba, simple Indian snack restaurant place. So I have to give a shout out to one of my viewers who mentioned Sisu in a comment that I just read either this morning or last night, I forget, but uh, looked it up on the map and then had something to shoot for basically to at least get through the tunnel and get to this side of the mountains and see something else beyond Manali. I've been to Manali before, 10 years ago, and I will definitely uh, plan to spend a few more days there. It is a really nice place. Most likely I will stay in Vashisht, the little village outside of uh, Manali, where there is a hot spring inside of a temple pretty unique and really cool thing there. But I wanted to see somewhere new and also at least get some sort of a taste of this much more extreme area and see these weird desolate landscapes. So if I'd gotten to Manali early enough and found a bus going to Kaza, I probably would have gone for it. But I don't know if they're even running, like if there are buses at all, especially now, getting into the cold season. Don't be Gamma in the land of Lama. They have all these cute sayings written along the uh, roads, trying to uh, warn people not to be crazy and stupid driving too fast and everything, and they come up with these really uh, cool and cute uh, sayings, rhyming, so one of them was, uh, the mountains are pleasure if you drive with leisure. And, you know, better late than never, and better loss of a minute than loss of life in a minute. Something like that. So, look at this. We are getting a taste of the Buddhist culture. Pretty sure that this must be a Buddhist archway. By the looks of it. And definitely Buddhist prayer flags. Okay. That looks like the actual town up there. So there is a proper town. That's good to know. Maybe I should have just, uh... gotten a room more in the center of things, but, uh... When that guy said, tents, and then we pulled up at that nice hotel, I was like, yes, 
I will take this over a tent. Anyways, doesn't matter. Bit of a walk, but uh, that's what I'm in the mood for, especially in this chilly air. Not sure of the temperature, but uh, it is definitely close to freezing. All right. Look at that view. Those mountains. The uh, town sprawled across the hillside. So I'm thinking about what to do for tomorrow, what my options are. And if uh, getting to the Speechy Valley is not possible, at least maybe I could do some sort of a drive if I can find a guy to uh, take me and either drive up the Lahal Valley here an hour or something and then come back or go up the Speedy Valley just part way. Oh man, this uh, dog is, oh geez, his ear is all torn up. Looks like he got in a fight. Waterfall View Cafe. Here's another good rhyming one. Safety is gainful. Accident is painful. And another one. We are on duty so that you can enjoy the beauty. Border roads. Okay. I guess uh, I want to go up there. Maybe these are the tents that he was referring to. Hello. Namaste. That kid's yelling something, I can't tell what. All tourists are directed to obtain permit for rotang and ticket for intra-valley sightseeing. Hmm. I wonder where I'm supposed to get that. Maybe that's for going to a certain point. And there we go, another one. Bro creates, connects, and cares. Okay. More of a uh, advertisement for... The uh, bro is the border roads. So we have buses here. Where are the buses going? What a scene. A lot of people down there. I guess they live in the tents. Incredible, the Hall Valley. Okay, all these people are getting in the buses. Interesting, what's going on here? Man, this is definitely another world. So, you can see, I am all dressed up nice and toasty warm in, uh, where was it? In Manakaran, I bought, you can see the brown, new long underwear, bottoms and tops. They're very nice and warm. And so I have my uh, black long sleeve shirt underneath this and then the jacket and then the uh, long underwear there. Hello, how are you? Chocolates? No chocolates. I don't have very much with me. Yeah. Pese or like pesa? Pesa? Rupee? Cash. Oh, cash. No cash. No cash. All right. Let's get up to downtown Sisu. Tandy. Where's Tandy? 24 kilometers. I guess that's before... I think it's Keelong is another town up the road on the way to Lay, the dock, that way. About a nine hour drive or so. So totally, you know, doable. Uh, what to do, what to do. I'll sleep on it tonight. 
And then I have two pairs of socks on. And my new scarf that I also bought in Manicaran. And then my other Georgia hat. So I was wearing a different Georgia hat before, earlier in the day. This one is a little bit warmer. The other one is more comfortable. So switch the hats. And then my gloves that I bought in Lviv, Ukraine, about five years ago. And then I have another pair of like sweats that I could put on. I don't know if it would even fit at this point, I'm trying to put two pairs of long underwear on under the pants when they're kind of tight jeans. But uh, I could always put on another like t-shirt. Oh, that's right. I have my uh, other long sleeve shirt. So I could put on another layer or two if needed. But uh, this is working pretty good. I am nice and warm. So a couple of random things that came to mind to mention. One was, uh, if you noticed on the uh, bus ride up here, I might split this into two different videos. So I might be referring to the previous video. But uh, anyways, the bus ride from Kulu to Manali, my uh, backpack went in the back luggage compartment. That always makes me really nervous. It's never disappeared before, but uh, with the uh, bus making all kinds of stops, people getting in there, getting stuff, getting their bags out, and then you never know, like, it's one of those things that could happen, but fortunately it's unlikely, but I always much prefer to bring my luggage with me onto the bus, have it under the seat or whatever, but uh, sometimes they will just insist, you know, they don't want the front getting all full up with people's luggage, so you just hope for the best. So I mentioned that uh, I found a rather large spider, like probably that big or so, thick legs, like freaky looking spider to see inside your room, hanging on the wall right above my bed. And so I took out my journal and threw it against the wall and instant death of the spider there. It happened again. The next day, actually the same day that I was telling the story, doing that hike up to the top of the ridge, up above Kutla, I got back to my room and then it was later that evening that uh, once again, this time in the bathroom, went in and boom, a spider exact same looking thing hanging on the wall and it met a similar fate but uh two days two spiders i was definitely looking all over for them after that all right cool looking uh, town here namaste aaron daba see i said before dabas It is pretty quiet around here. That is a nice looking hotel, I guess, there. I like the uh, blue paint job. Day night cafe. Let's check out some of the grub. There's a restaurant in my hotel, so I'll probably just eat there later tonight in my room. Kessar milk. I think that I've had that before. It might be like the uh, sweet, like almond or something, but that would be badam is almond. So I forget exactly what kesar is, but I think I've had it and it's really tasty. Jalebi, dessert, naan bread, chow mein, paneer is the cheese, tikka is masala curry, biryani, rice with chicken, pizza, Indian food mix. So that is a tali. Curries, dal, 
rice, chapati or naan. I think that's raita. And then you got momos, tandoori chicken, paratha. I very often get paratha. I prefer it over chapati. It's similar but different. It's like a little more buttery tasting and slightly different to kind of dough used. And then you can get like aloo paratha with potatoes in it or paneer paratha with cheese. So I just had a great conversation with uh, the guy in the blue there, matching the hotel. He is the hotel owner. He is from Kathmandu, Nepal. And uh, he was uh, trekking in Sikkim, where I was uh, six months ago or eight months ago or so, back uh, last spring, the other side of Nepal, but uh, part of India. And his son lives in New York City and is in the American Army. He had uh, great English. Okay, I guess that's... Oh no, we got more town. Ooh. Once the dust clears, you can see there's a path. Oh man. I'm going to have to go for that. Let's go for it. What happened here? Swept away by a flood or something? Or just drove off the road? Man, this thing is just totally destroyed. Okay. So it is like 5 p.m. Not going to be a lot of light left, so I'm not going on some sort of big hike here. But, uh, let's go for a wander. I'm also rapidly getting hungry. Haven't eaten since my omelets and cookies back in Kulu. Also, as soon as I hit the hill, then my legs just start to scream at me. My big hike up to Rassel was just yesterday. So look at this. We have a good trail going up this mountain. Why? Where is it going? I suspect that I will not get there. Whatever this is going to, it must be a ways back up there, but uh, still plenty of light for now. Let's do a little hike. At least see what's around the corner up there. I wonder if it could be going to like a uh, kind of a slum camp or something that people live in or I don't know what else. Where else would this thing be? be going to. Maybe a village. A proper village back up here. I'm starting to overheat. So that brings to mind a reality of traveling to this uh, region when it is getting cold, a long ways from winter still, November 8th. It is gonna get a whole lot colder. But one of the things that makes it very extreme is the lack of heating in the hotel rooms which is the case 
in almost all of the hotels, although you can quite possibly get a space heater for your room, especially if you're staying longer term. And maybe in some places that might have like especially nice, expensive hotel rooms, then they might have heating in them, but I've never experienced that in the Himalayas. Basically, you should expect to be very, very cold in your room in the evenings. It is one thing to be outside like this, walking around, exploring during the day, all dressed up. It can be below freezing or whatever, and you're nice and warm, you're moving around. But then, when you go back to your hotel room, and it is basically as cold as outside, like a few degrees warmer from your body temperature and just being less exposed to the outdoors, but uh, basically it is almost as cold as outside. And so to then spend the evening in weather that is going to be almost just like this, sitting, not moving, trying to use the computer, watch a video, read a book, etc., then your body temperature plummets and you are not prepared for keeping yourself warm in that kind of uh, cold. And so that's when it gets just really unpleasant through the long evenings. If you just had heat in the rooms, then it changes the whole equation. And so that is something to keep in mind. It isn't like Switzerland or Alaska even, where everywhere is gonna have heating. So that is part of the challenge and the fun is just the extremes, the way that it pushes you. Very similar to the trekking in Nepal. No heating in the rooms, quite possibly in the uh, common area. There will be a stove going and you hang out there in the evening, so that makes a big difference. But uh, that is just the way that it goes. It is costly. Most of the people here, I guess, just survive through the winter. Cold most of the time. I'm sure that many have heating. I'm not sure about that. But just look around. Pretty much no trees. So that is a factor as well. While I was hiking around elsewhere in the uh, Parvati Valley, many other places, you'll see big stacks of firewood next to the homes. And so I guess they do have stoves inside their homes. And for all I know, maybe some of the people have electric heat, space heaters or some other form of heating. So not sure exactly what the deal is with locals when the temperatures plummet, you know, well below freezing, you would hope that they have some kind of heating inside. All right, this will probably be the end of my walk, but uh, this gives me an idea for tomorrow. What about like going way back up in there if I don't do the drive, huh, I think it is going to be sleep on it, see what I'm feeling like in the morning. Especially with this really nice room, even though it's going to be cold, no heating there, but uh, it's a very comfortable room. I have uh, hot water, and so if you can take a hot shower when you get back, get warmed up. That helps a whole lot. So I could be 
perfectly happy to spend another night there tomorrow night. Uh, I just love getting way the hell out here, experiencing somewhere so different, so remote, nobody around, other than maybe a snow leopard watching me or a Sasquatch. So from here, not seeing as clear of a trail, this could be kind of the end of it. Okay, let's go a little bit further. I am starting to notice it getting darker, so I don't want to get too far away. But uh, Let's just look around at that corner. So one more thing that I thought I'd mention that will be a factor in my travels, a big factor, is I have a flight booked. Today is November 8th. My flight is on November 13th in only five days. So I booked that flight four days ago when I was up in Tosh in Parvati Valley. I was considering my options. I had just learned recently in the course of the drive out to Parvati that there is an airport in Kulu, the town where I caught the bus to Manali. And I was very happy to hear that because I wasn't really looking forward to the drive out of here, getting out of the Himalayas back to wherever those winding roads all the construction from the uh landslides and everything it is just really really brutal driving conditions that is one of the other big factors traveling through the himalayas in general of india or nepal is uh the roads are just so rough so winding bumpy unpredictable various uh, things can slow you down etc so getting out of here was going to be a long drive to you know Delhi or Jaipur or Amritsar so once I learned about that airport then I decided to look online see what kind of flights were available and man, did I find an awesome flight. Kulu, Amritsar. Never been there, never been to Punjab. One hour, direct flight, 45 bucks. Including luggage, and even including the upgrade to be able to change the flight if needed. I guess I can change to another flight and only pay the difference in the fare. It was like $2.50 more, something like that, for this upgrade to be able to change the flight. So that is an option if I want to stay longer because when I booked the flight, then it was like nine days out. And so I thought, okay, another nine days in the Himalayas, that should be good. Now I'm feeling like, man, I could definitely spend longer up here. So we'll see, but... Uh, I'm also really looking forward to seeing Amritsar, the Golden Temple, and then further travels in India from there. So I'll just uh, give it a few days, see what happens, see what I'm able to see in the next couple of days here. Okay, so, not seeing a trail at this point, so maybe scratch that plan, you could, you know, boulder hop or whatever but uh that would be pretty intense all right it is getting noticeably darker fast and i'm getting hungry so i'll head back and uh if there's enough light left i'll show that other part of sisu around to the right there so we'll see what happens but it is a Good looking 
various choices ahead of me one way or another, whether it's more time in the Himalayas or getting down to that part of India and then traveling onwards. So it is definitely darker now. I am back at uh, this area with all these rock walls, which seems to be where the path was going. So what exactly is this? Because it's not like it's looking like terrace gardens or anything. Why the walls? Why the trail here? What the heck is this? Like, was it an old village? Is it a grazing area for goats or something? I mean, these are clearly man-made walls. There too, a lot of work went into creating that. But why? What was the point? Huh. I cannot figure this one out because it's so jumbled. Rocks all over the place. No cleared out spaces. No signs of anything else as far as human creation. No buildings, shacks. Huh. There is another possibility for tomorrow is get up on top of that ridge because I like getting those views. I can see there a higher peak peeking out there behind the ridge. So we definitely have some very interesting options for tomorrow. So I'm back at the crashed Jeep. And it is pretty close to full-on dark, so I am going to walk back to my hotel, relax, try to stay warm, and get some good Indian food. So I'm back in the town. Straight ahead is the Blue Hotel. As you can see, no lights on other than this one over here. So that isn't a good sign for my evening as far as having light in the room and the water heater turning on because power was out when I was there and the water was literally ice cold. Okay, maybe not literally because then it would be frozen, but practically ice cold water so it hadn't heated up yet and so I have no hot water and no electricity if power is out. The hot water is not actually a big deal because I don't need a shower. But uh, for the morning it would be good to have. But uh, more importantly is just to have some light in the room. At least I can still work on the computer. My battery is fully charged and most likely the power will come on at some point this evening, but uh, once again, just another one of the extreme realities of traveling around here. Everything is variable. Electricity, water, and by water I mean not just hot or cold, but whether you have water at all. I didn't mention this when I was in Manikaran, but uh, my hotel there, the water was completely off, not running at all. It would regularly just cut out and then you would have no water whatsoever. And then it could be a few hours before it came back, which is an odd one. That's actually unusual for India. But after that was the case, the first day, I made a point of filling a bucket up with water and then when I woke up in the morning, the next morning, water was off and I was damn glad that I had that bucket of water to, you know, 
do the usual stuff, wash hands, face, etc. So that is something to uh, do in general, especially if it's a cheaper hotel and especially if it is just kind of a more extreme remote place is fill up the bucket because there's usually a bucket and a ladle in the uh, bathroom. Fill it up with water, even if it's just cold water, just in case that happens. Okay, not too much farther back to my hotel. Looking forward to taking a seat, bundling up in a blanket on my bed, getting to work, and here's a nice uh, thing to look forward to. I have half a bottle of wine waiting for me that I'd bought in uh, Casso yesterday and then brought the half a bottle along with me. So uh, looking forward to sipping some wine, working away, and uh, hope the power comes on. So, And it looks like maybe good news. Lights on here. That is my hotel up ahead. And it looks all lit up. Look at the awesome fire that these guys have going. They're going to be warmer than me. And this is a very comforting sight. The Hotel Sisu. All lit up, nice and bright. I am ordering dinner right now. So, I have a weak 2G connection on my phone, which I am trying to utilize, making it a, a hotspot to connect to the internet. Might not happen here, but uh, no big deal. Otherwise, I will just be working away here on editing the video I filmed today. So, it is cold, but I am staying fairly Nice and warm here with the uh, thick blanket. I have dinner. We have chapati, jira rice, aloo gobi, which is potato, and I forget what gobi is. Well, let's uh, take a look. And then chicken masala right there. Tons of food. This is the half portion, and it still looks like a lot. Let's try to see what... Uh, the gobi is, I forget, it's either cauliflower or garbanzo beans, I think cauliflower. Yes. That looks and smells very, very good. So, it ain't perfect, but life could be worse. Cheers. And the dinner there is 770 rupees, $9. And amazingly, it actually managed to pull through and load the uh, pages on my channel, the uh, videos page and the comments page, but it is so slow it can barely do it. I don't think I'm going to be able to uh, actually get this video uploaded. So you can see right here, Rasol Hike. That is the video of hiking up to Rasol Village, which you will have seen by now. But uh, that is uploaded, all ready to go. All I need is enough of a connection to, you know, get through uploading the thumbnail and filling in the description. And then here you can see the videos that are already posted and number of views and all that kind of stuff. But uh, I don't think this connection is going to work to get that posted. So. That is why the gap with no video today. And there we go, a nice looking plate of food, the uh, chicken masala there, and the aloo gobi there, jira rice, chapati, and it is actually within the realm of possibility I might get this video uploaded. I guess you will know one way or another. And boom, amazingly, I was able to get that video posted, this one, hiking to a remote village in the Himalayas of India. 
So you can see it is so slow that it won't load the thumbnail images. Eventually it might make it happen. I'm trying to uh, show the actual speeds, but it won't go to the website that I use to check the uh, Wi-Fi speeds. Fast.com. It's been spinning and spinning trying to get there. But, uh, oh, looks like there we go. All right, you can see in real time as it tries to measure. I mean, this is going to be ridiculous. And look what it said. Could not reach our servers to perform the test. You may not be connected to the internet. Not surprised. This is about as slow as it can get and still be able to actually somehow miraculously accomplish anything. And the final update on the internet situation here, check that out. So I dumped the cookies on my phone, turned it off, turned it on again, and it connected to a 4G connection here. And I now have decent Wi-Fi, 18 megabytes and 2.1 uploading. I won't be uploading with my cell phone connection, however, because it uses up too much data. But uh, at least I can catch up on some things online. All right. That is all for now. See ya.